Sucker Punch is a film that was released in 2011 and is written and directed by Zack Snyder. It follows the character of Baby Doll, who, after trying to protect her younger sister from her stepfather at the beginning, accidentally shoots her. And as such, her stepfather puts her into a mental institution. Now, this mental institution isn't quite the place that it should be. Uh, it's it, Instead, it's a place where young girls are abused by a member of the staff there. He mistreats them, uses them, and essentially sells them to other men. Now, Baby Doll is ever so slightly helped by a doctor called Vera Gorsky, played by Carla Gugino, who tells her that she needs to escape. She needs to use her mind to escape. Go into a fantasy world and use that to make her stronger. The strength exists firstly from within the mind. And that's precisely what she does. So when she's forced to put on these dance shows for, for men that are brought into this building, she escapes to places in her mind. She uses that power, that strength that she kind of, that she wins from that to build a team who will help her actually escape in, in, in the real world. Then she becomes empowering to those ladies, those, those those other ladies that are trapped in this place. Now the question of whether or not this all plays out successfully is going to be the determining factor to how much you like this film. And I personally think that this film isn't the biggest success in that regard. However, I do still like it. Um, now, there are a lot of elements about this film to love, and first and foremost, it's the visuals. The visuals are absolutely stunning. Snyder, in the director side of things, also does some brilliant work as well. You know, I, I think about the, the opening sequence in which so much of Baby, Stoll, Baby Doll's backstory is set up, is shown to us without any dialogue. To me, that's what cinema is all about and I think the conclusion of the film like the final 10 minutes or so 15 minutes is also really strong it's really well concluded not everyone gets out alive it's necessary I think to tell a story about sacrifice uh, to tell a, a savior story in effect in which one person who is the hero has to die in order for others to continue. One of the worst elements of this film is Scott Glenn, or at least his character any, at any rate. I, I'm not got anything against Scott Glenn. I just don't think his character... For one, I don't think it should be a man. Um, I think Snyder missed a really great opportunity here to have Carla Gugino play this character as well. We get her telling Baby Doll to use her mind, to, es to escape, to find the strength there. That sets her up, essentially, to be something similar within the dream world for Baby Doll. So, you know, when Scott Glenn comes on and starts giving these pearls of wisdom, that should be Carla Gugino's character. The fact that this is a, wo a story about female empowerment, about... A about a system of men that are kind of keeping these women down. Again, you know, have it be Carla Gugino because it, that would make more of a statement to me. The dreams themselves are also a bit of a mixed bag. Some of them are better than others. And the ones that work best are the ones that feed into the reality, the real world situation. But some of them, the link feels a little bit tenuous. Uh, now, the first one that we get with Baby Doll in this kind of Japanese kind of samurai uh, hut kind of thing in which these three huge samurai warriors come, absolutely brilliant. I love this sequence. Visually, it's just phenomenal, stunning. Um, but also it shows us how Baby Doll awakens that strength within her. Then we get other dreams in which they don't entirely relate to what's going on in the real world. So you give Jamie Chung's character in the dream this big robot thing, you know, that they're fighting in this kind of almost like a Guillermo del Toro type world in which we have these soldiers who have been brought back from the dead, a bit like the dude from uh, Hellboy uh, via, via clockwork. And... 
Yeah, so her character, Chung's character, is given this big robot to fly. Now, if that related to something in the real world, that would make more sense. And during that dream, Abby Cornish's character, Sweet Pea, is the one who's essentially gone on the mission. She's trying to steal this map off the wall. So, would it not have made more sense to have her character in this dream situation be the one who has to complete some kind of mission? So that the two of them are going alongside each other. And as something's happening in reality, something's happening in, in the dream world as well. But it doesn't play out like that. So it makes that section essentially nothing more than just a visual treat, some nice action, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's entertaining for those reasons, but it doesn't really feed into the narrative in the way that it should. Um, but later on, like I say, we get we get a, a different vision in which, like I say, this what this one works for me. It's, it's they go into this kind of sci-fi future world in which they're kind of fighting their way through this train of robots. Now, when they first get on there, I was a little bit yeah, I, I don't really care kind of thing. But then, as stuff started to happen in the real world, it fed into what was going on in the dream world. And we get a death of one of the characters in that sequence. And we see it feeding into what's going on in the dream. When it started doing that, I was really engaged. I really felt like all of these, all of these dreams, all of these kind of visions that they were having had a point. There was a reason for them being there. So that really is the strength and the weakness of the film. When those dreams are feeding into what's going on into reality or vice versa, it works very well, but when it doesn't, and unfortunately that is too often, then it's just an exercise in, in visuals. I think this is Zack Snyder's worst film, but having said that, I will still give it a three out of five, because like I say, I, I think there are some great ideas here. Visually, it's stunning. We have really strong opening and quite, quite a strong ending. Um, and there are, you know, like I say, peaks and troughs throughout the middle section. You know, there's a, there's a lot you can take out that you can really enjoy, and just other bits that don't quite don't quite get there. For the sake of this review, I watched the extended cut. I gotta say, I don't think the extended cut really added a right lot. Even though there's 17 minutes, um, I I don't think it added that much to it that you don't already get from the theatrical cut. Have you seen? Sucker Punch. If so, what did you think about it? And if you've seen the director's cut and you think I'm, I think I'm wrong, if you think it does add something, then please let me know. Comment below, give me your thoughts, and until next time, cracking.